If you have ever been to the Germantown campus or the Health Sciences Center, then you've probably seen the most visible evidence of green energy use by Montgomery College, the solar panels on the rooftops. But there is much more that goes on behind the scenes to ensure our college has the best green routine. I'm Mike Whitcomb. I'm the energy manager for Montgomery College, and I've been here for 23 years. Right now, uh, Montgomery College is consuming about 70% of its electrical energy from uh, wind, wind power and solar energy. Uh, just about 70% is from wind power generated uh, from wind turbines, uh, and we buy that in the form of renewable energy credits. And we generate on site a little less than 1% of our total electricity through site generated photovoltaics. And, and it's, th that's on the Germantown uh, campus and the Tacoma Park campus. Uh, when we build the new Rockville Science Building, that'll have, uh, that'll have photovoltaics on its roof and the new Germantown Bioscience Building, uh, which is now under design, will also have photovoltaics on its roof. Originally back in, 19, in the late 1970s, uh, the Germantown campus uh, humanities and social science building and the science and applied studies building were built with about 500 thermal flat plate solar collectors. Uh, those uh, reached the end of their useful life in, uh, in the late 90s and we replaced most of those uh, with photovoltaics, which is the uh, direct generation of electricity from solar power. power. Uh, previously it had all been thermal energy. Uh, we, did, we did maintain a small portion of the thermal uh, uh, power and we converted the flat plates to uh, evacuated tube collectors. That, that building will be a LEED Gold certified building, so we have all of the, uh, the pieces of the environmental activities that go into the LEED certification. Uh, sustainable sites, which means that we have taken particular uh, care to be a good steward of the uh, uh, water runoff uh, with stormwater management practices. We'll have a portion of the roof, we'll have a green roof, which will basically have uh, green uh, sedum plants growing on the roof in trays uh, that basically will absorb some of the storm water uh, and allowing a little bit of uh, additional cooling because you won't be absorbing the heat into the roofing surface it'll be absorbed into the into the plant material uh, we uh, will include uh, energy and environment component uh, which means that the building itself will be about 40% more efficient than a standard uh, building of, of its uh, type. And uh, the environmental aspects of it basically are uh, good refrigerant management. Uh, once you've done a, a good job of making everything efficient, you don't need as much refrigerant to cool the building. Uh, certainly refrigerant management is uh, of importance to uh, the not only greenhouse gas, uh, but, but the ozone depletion issue. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, waste reduction, you know, materials handling. So the building itself, when it's constructed, the materials uh, reduced waste uh, management, all the construction materials are gonna be recycled. I think up to 75% of the construction waste will be recycled. And then also during the, when the building is is in, occupied, there will be a, an active recycling management program, uh, which we have today. We have an active recycling management program. Down in the lobby, we're going to have uh, displays and interactive uh, kiosks and other types of, uh, of LCD screens that will be displaying information about the solar system, about the energy consumption in the building, and uh, generally uh, it'll be accessible to uh, the students, staff, faculty, uh, the public, and it'll present the information about what kind of technologies that we used in that building.
Montgomery College has been a leader in recycling. We started a recycling program uh, back in the uh, early 90s and uh, it continues today. There is now a county mandated requirement to recycle 50 percent of your waste stream. Well the college actually exceeds that and we recycle 69 percent of our waste stream. We also have increased since 2002 uh, from 1 million pounds of, of of our waste stream being recycled to two million pounds. I mean, uh, excuse me, three million pounds. So they actually we've increased uh, over the last uh, several years, uh, two million pounds of, of waste recycling. We also have received in the last, in the, in the last six of eight years, we've received the, the county's award for recycling. In 1985, the County Council mandated uh, building energy performance standards and we complied with those. So everything that we've built uh, since 1985 has uh, had a, a high, has been built as a high performance building. We also um, have always done stormwater management, uh, which is now basically a requirement. Uh, the environmental aspects of indoor environmental quality, we've always uh, put high performance filtering systems in. Um, we've had high, high performance ventilation systems. Uh, we've always done high performance uh, lighting systems. As the technology, technology got better and better, we've in, improved that. In fact, we've gone through several cycles of, um, of installing, uh, reinstalling uh, uh, equipment like uh, high performance lighting uh, at the end of the useful life of the previous renovation or retrofit. Uh, so we've been through uh, a number of lighting retrofits to improve the lighting systems in the buildings. And lighting systems represent about 60% of a building's energy consumption, so it's really important to, to pay attention to that. Um, new technologies, uh, LED lighting, which is now a, a lighting technology that most people have heard about, uh, we've been using LEDs uh, since uh, the late 90s, uh, particularly in our exit signs or those applications which are, have, have to run lighting for long periods of time. Uh, it turns out to be not only an energy savings but a maintenance savings also. Smart grid is basically the existing electrical power grid, and there's a large um, there's a there's waste in the electric power grid. When we generate electricity, regardless of the fuel source, uh, from the time it gets converted into electricity to the time it gets to your uh, wall outlet or your light bulb, there's a tremendous amount of waste, and that waste some of that waste can be um, uh, reduced by the use of this smart grid technology. Basically, it's, it's using electronic communications to allow the existing system to work more efficiently. So uh, you will have uh, electronic communications, somebody will be controlling which plant goes on at which time and so forth, and the user will then be also asked to do something to help the system. Well, Montgomery College since 1992 has been installing uh, demand management capabilities in its central plants on all three campuses. And demand management is a strategy where the user can time the use of the electrical consumption to better match the, uh, the demand of the system. On all three campuses, we've installed uh, central plants, central cooling plants with both um, uh, energy storage and communications capability. So what that means is that we, if we were to receive a signal uh, from the um, power grid to reduce our electrical demand, that we could switch over to uh, storage such as uh, uh, ice or in some cases, we have cogeneration capabilities where we run uh, uh, engine-driven chillers instead of electric chillers, uh, so we can switch over to that and help reduce that grid uh, load 
and in, in the same time we'll get paid uh, a, you know, a benefit. We'll reduce our costs by being able to participate in this smart grid. The reason why we installed it originally was because we were, uh, we have a demand management uh, electrical um, rate structures so that when we generate the ice at night when the electricity is less costly, uh, we, we melt that ice at and during the daytime when the electricity is more expensive.